for joining us today while we stretch and get a little stronger so our everyday activities are just a little easier to do. Before we even begin to talk about the program, let's meet your friend, Connie. Hi, I'm Connie. I'm um, delighted to be here. Mary usually likes me to say something about what I do, who I am, and my favorite hobby is genealogy. I made an interesting discovery, Mary. In Are 18, we related? Maybe. <laughs> in 1854, my great-great-grandfather came over from Holland, and I have recently discovered that his children and his brother's children, who also came over later, are the only nunnings in the United States. What's a nunning? That's my grandfather's name. I love it. We're all related, so if you ever meet a nunning out there somewhere, <laughs> tell them you know their cousin. <laughs> that is wonderful. Now, uh, didn't at one time you take Italian lessons? Oh, I still do take Italian lessons, yes. Good. And I'm probably not a bit better than I was <laughs> here ago. But I love the language. It's beautiful. However, I'm also learning to pronounce German because it's difficult and I want to know how. And then, since I'm studying my family from Holland, I'm also learning how to pronounce Dutch. And that's worse. <laughs> you got to do everything in your throat. G's are... <sighs> Really? You've heard of the painter Van Gogh, right? Yeah. It's actually Van Gogh. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to tell all my friends I know how to pronounce his name well. They won't know who in the world you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are happy to have you as ever. Now, I'm happy to be here. Great. Today's program is called Buckets of Fun because all you need is a bucket. And so we have these nice plastic buckets. If you don't have a bucket this big, you could get a dish pan, you could get a big plastic dish, anything that won't break. And also we're going to need a cloth. We have dish cloths or you could have a face cloth or any kind of cloth. We're going to have lots of fun today exercising with a bucket. Now, you'll notice that our buttocks are towards the edges of our chair. If you can't do this without hurting your back, you can take a pillow and put it right behind you, and that will support you. Also, if it's really hard for you to pick up a bucket by the side, and sometimes it is for our hands, then you can put on a pair of mittens, or I like big old gloves. These are my dad's gloves. So they're kind of nice and roomy, but it really softens my hands when I'm trying to pick up something and it makes it a little more padded. So before you begin this or any other exercise program you'll want to check with your doctor and he'll tell you exercises you should or shouldn't do. You want to wear loose comfortable clothing like Connie and I have. You want to make sure that you have good supportive footwear even though we're not going to be on our feet today we're going to be stretching and reaching and touching with our feet so we don't want our feet to slide out from our shoes. Also, you'll want to have water that you drink before, during, and after our time together. Staying well hydrated is really important summer and winter. Also, you want to work at your own pace. If Connie and I are working and we're working a little too hard for you, then you just slow it down. If we're working a little slow for you and you can pick up the pace in a nice, easy way, safely, go right ahead and do it. Also, of course, you have your doctors okay, and you want to do your best because you're only with us for a little bit of time today. Hopefully, you'll be with us tomorrow and the day after because consistency in exercising is really important. So you just do what you can today and then do a little more tomorrow, and before you know it, you're going to be zipping right around. When we do a move and we turn or we reach, you want to make sure that you're not bouncing because you don't want to pull any muscles. You don't want to push or force anything. And of course, if you eat well, you've got good nutrition in you, and that's going to give you energy. So you want to eat your fruits and your vegetables and your whole wheat bread. And some people don't eat pasta, but you know, I really like pasta. It's a good energy food when you need it. It is. I was reading that protein is really, really good for energy, but the most expedient way to get your energy is through carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So if they're complex, Flex, meaning dark bread or whole wheat pasta, that's good for you. Excellent. Okay, so now that we know that, let's get warmed up. Are you ready? I'm 
Ready? Okay, and I hope you're ready too. Here we go. We're just gonna start with the feet, just tapping the toes. There you go. Now you yes. You're doing that really well, Connie. Well, thank you. <laughs> and you'll notice that our feet are right underneath our knees and our knees are right in front of our hips. Our shoulders are right over our hips and our ears are over our shoulders. So our posture is nice and tall and we're holding our tummies in. I have a sweater so I can fluff out my shirt and you don't know where my tummy is, but Connie's really got to hold her tummy in because she has a <laughs> splendid shirt on. Let's tap those heels. Now you'll notice when we were tapping the toes, you felt it a little on the side of the mm -hmm. shin. That's your anterior tibialis. Those muscles are really important for good balance. Who would have known? I would know. I know, you'd know. You are like a little smarty pants. So every once in a while, you'll see Connie do the smarty pants dance. <laughs> there you go. Let's bring those heels out and in. So now we're starting to work the ankles a little more and the muscles and ligaments and tendons on the inside and the outside of the ankles. And Smokey the Bear would be good that knowing that we knew this. Like if we're walking through the forest and you see maybe like something that's smoking and you went like this and squished it out, Smokey would be really proud of you. And Smokey gives good bear hugs, you know. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. All right. Especially when you have just squished out a forest fire. <laughs> That's right. And let's relax those legs. Keep the arms going. Now, I'm following Connie because Connie got her arms going, but Connie can't help it. When there's music, she's like helpless. She's just moving. I am. And that's wonderful. There we go. And doing that is kind of fun. You know, if you're home and you're saying to yourself, you know, it's too hot, I can't go outside, it's too cold, I don't want to go outside, put some music on, music that you love, and just dance around. Especially if there's no one at the house to watch you. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get our arms slower and bigger. So we're really bringing our elbows forward. I'll show you from the side. We're really pushing them back and bringing them forward. And you want to do your best. If you have one shoulder that doesn't work so well, that's okay. We're glad you're here and joined us. Let's make them small and quick. Oh boy, small and quick, small and quick. I'm bouncing in my chair. How about you? <laughs> I am so happy Jason gave us squishy chairs today. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go, and then relax. Now all we're going to do is go forward and back a little. We don't want to stop completely because we got our heart rates up a little. Did you get your heart rate up a little? It's chugging away. Chugging away. All righty. It's like the little engine that could. Yes, it is. I think I can. I think I can. There you go. So now what we're doing is we're making sure that we don't stop our bodies. However, we're coming forward and our hands are on our thighs. So when we lean forward, our back isn't the only thing. I'll show you from the side. The back isn't the only thing that's helping us come up. Also, pushing our hands down into our thighs will help our back come up. So we're not straining our back while we're making our back nice and flexible. And then you'll notice Connie's really going back. When we go back, we pull our belly in and then we use that stomach to pull us right back up. That's I can it. feel that. Excellent. There you go. And I can feel it, so it means I can go home and have some pasta. Yeah. <laughs> because when you put tomatoes on it, tomatoes have lycopene, and that's good to help prevent prostate cancer. There you go. Now, we're going to hold it still and we're going to bring our arms up just like this. We're going to be agitators in a washing machine. Speaking of an agitator, Connie is really good at this. <laughs> so here we go, a little. So it's very, very tiny. Our first washing machine that I remembered went like this. We're sitting nice and tall. So what we're doing is we're rotating our upper body around our hips, which are planted nice and firmly on the chair. Our feet are flat, our heads are high, and we feel terrific. Just terrific. Loose. Loose? Yeah, you know I had that reputation once. <laughs> okay, rotate, good, good. Now we're gonna make it a little slower and ask ourselves to go a little longer. Good, excellent. Beautiful, that's beautiful. Look how Connie and I are going. You'd oh. think we were synchronized swimmers. I synchronized feel exercise. that just making my abdominals happy. That's right, because we're working both our internal and external obliques, otherwise known as the sides of your waist. 
That too. There you go, that too. There you go, now make it small and tight. Boom, 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 boom. You know what our washing machine used to do? It used to go like this, and then it would stop and go like this. Do you remember those? No, see, so you're no, too, you're too I young. Didn't do that. All right. But I'm waiting until we can do the mango part. The mango part? Mango. Oh, the mango. We used to have a mangoing iron. <laughs> that's, how, that's how our sheets got pressed. Yes. It's hard to know that we really remember these things because we're in our 20s. That's true. <laughs> well, it was my previous life. Oh, good. I like that. Okay, now we're going to stop and shake it out. It's really important every once in a while simply to shake out your hands. A lot of times we use our hands doing repetitive things. Mm -hmm. Like if we're driving a car for a long time, sometimes if there's traffic, we tend to squeeze our hands. So you want to loosen them up. And you kind of shake them out like you have like water on the ends of your fingers. Or if you're melodic, you can do that little thing you were doing, which was kind of cute. Yeah, yeah. Stretch. I'm going to follow you. Stretch. There we go. We're opening and closing. And pull your fingers as far apart as you can. That's great. This is terrific. If you have hands that are a little kind of achy, you make a little loose fist and open those hands as wide as you can get them. There you go. Works beautifully. Now, I hate to tell you that I'm going to add this, Connie, but part of a nice yoga stretch is when you open your hands, open your eyes as wide as they'll go. And then your mouth. <laughs> and then relax. Wasn't that interesting? You because are so lucky I'm not vain. <laughs> <laughs> but we tend not to move our pace muscles a lot. And so that really, really helps. Okay, I don't know about you, but I think I might be ready to grab my bucket. Okay. Okay. First a sip of water. Okay, first a sip of water, so make sure you get some water. Cheers. And if you don't like water, you can always take, if you have like a favorite juice or a favorite beverage, which is non-alcoholic, you can do mostly that and then a little water. And then the next time have a little more water and then a little more water, making the amount of beverage that you've added smaller and smaller, but by then you're used to it. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, when you have to learn how to drink skim milk, when I was first trying to do that, it was really hard. Okay, so we have our buckets, and we've taken our cloths out and put them to the side. Okay, good. So all we do is hold the sides of the bucket and bring it side, side. Now right now, Connie and I are looking straight ahead. So even though it doesn't look like it, we're actually exercising our necks because yes. we're rotating our shoulders around that cervical vertebrae. Good. Great. That's it. And our arms are not stretched out completely. There's a little Betty Bend in them, but they're getting stretched out further further. Great job. Our shoulders are relaxed. You're doing terrifically. Connie and I appreciate you joining us today. Great Thank job. You. Now you'll notice, are you using your feet at all? Not me. No? Okay. Are you? Yeah. I'm pushing my feet down to push myself off to get over to the other side. Oh, that? Yes. Yeah. You are doing that. Okay. Let's hold it here. Now, Connie and I sometimes make mistakes. So we're gonna hold our pale handle down and the other hand down. There you go. Got it. And we're gonna take this, we're gonna fill it up with water and throw it over the shoulder. Then we're gonna come down and get more water and throw it over the shoulder. Now a lot of things are happening. This is what they call functional training. And we're putting the fun in functional. Seeing my family puts fun in dysfunctional. <laughs> So here we go, we scoop the water up, throw it over our shoulder. When we lean forward, if you have a bad back, I'll show you from the side, only come forward a little bit. Good. And then if your back is okay, you can come forward a little bit more and throw the water over your shoulder and start to lean back. But always remember, you have to let your body tell you what you're doing well and what you need to really slow down on. Great job. And now we're done. And you wanna know why we're lucky? Why are we lucky, Because Mary? these buckets were full of salt. And if you throw salt over your shoulder, does it mean somebody's coming from dinner? Or you're lucky? No, it's to ward off evil, I think. Oh, no evil here! <laughs> okay. So, now we're going to take the handle. Remember, if it's difficult for you, and sometimes it will be difficult for you to hold on to a handle, you can do one of two things. You can take your cloth, there you go. 
and you can go like this, mm -hmm. and that makes and holding on grip. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And if the grip is difficult, this is really true. I learned this. If it's if you have arthritis in your hands and you're turning on your key for your car, for some mm -hmm. people that's really hard. If you take a washcloth and just dampen it and get a hold of the key, I would yeah. probably do it. Yeah, you dampen it so that it's um, not it, slip proof. Not, right. <laughs> so non it's skid. Non skid proof, so it doesn't slip. So you take a, da a damp washcloth end, put it around the key, and it's much easier to turn. Sure, it would be. Of course, it's even better if you have a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. Okay, now you really want to look behind you and in front of you. Look up to the ceiling and make sure you're not going to hit anything at all because our buckets are swinging. Watch for the cat. What? Oh yeah, you do not want to knock the cat on the head. What a surprise if the cat walked from behind your chair. Yeah, the, the cat would not be happy. No, 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 and we like happy cats. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start slow. We swing the bucket a little forward, a little back. There you go. Now you'll notice Connie and I are leading with our thumbs so that the bucket's not going to swing back and forth by itself. We're actually leading with the handle. We're mm -hmm. holding kind of our thumbs on the handle. Good. Now it's gonna come up a little higher. There you go. And it's gonna come up a little higher. Make sure you don't bend your elbow. You don't wanna clunk yourself. You don't wanna hit anything on the ceiling. There you go, up and back. It's up and back. It's up and back. And now you're done. Can you feel that a little bit? That. Yeah. You can feel it in the shoulder. So even though we weren't working with a weight, you could still feel it. I, it felt as though I was working with a weight after the seventh or eighth. <laughs> <laughs> it did. She's absolutely right. But that's good. I need a good workout on my shoulders. And you just got it. So when we do our workouts on our shoulders, we want to get those shoulders back to a resting length. So we're going to take the bucket and we're going to put it over on this side. And we're going to take this shoulder and pull it up and back and down. There you go. Pull that shoulder up and back and down. Really want to loosen up the shoulder. It does. It feels good. And you kind of tell your shoulder that you're really sorry that you did that. Even though your shoulder's going, I know I'm going to feel better tomorrow for this, but right now I'm kind of mad at you. <laughs> Okay, then we shake that whole arm out, the whole arm, the fingers, the hands. Good job. And now we're going to go to the other side. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so we grab our buckets. Okay, and again, we're leading with the thumbs. There you go. And so we start out nice and slow. Good. Beautiful. So we're working on our range of motion. Got to watch out for the tree. Did you almost knock the tree down? Well, I almost tapped it. <laughs> if you maybe tap the tree, table. maple syrup will come <laughs> Up and back. Up and back. So we're loosening up the shoulder. Now we're going to ask our shoulder to work a little harder, and we're going to bring the bucket up further. So the bucket comes up higher and down. Higher and down. Good. And it's kind of wiggly wobbly, so make sure it doesn't knock you in the head. You have to have your arm almost completely straight with just a little bitty bend in it. And make sure to sweep it back, sweep it up, sweep it back, sweep it up. Good job. And now four more times. Three and two and one. You're done. Wow, I can feel that. So again, we're going to move that shoulder up, back, and down. Much so we're loosening up the shoulder. Good job. You've got it. There you go. Now let's shake that whole arm out. The whole arm, the shoulder, the fingers. Excellent. Now we were working with the upper body a little bit. Now we're going to take our bucket and put it over upside down. So we have a hard top. There you go. Really, we could do a drumming workshop. But until such a time, we're going to sit nice and tall. This is going to help us a lot. We're going to lean back, pull the belly in, bring one foot up, and tap on it. Are you ready? Oh, good. We'll go slowly at first. So you want to lean back a little bit, pull your belly in. You're not arching back like this. You're pulling the belly in. Good, good. Lean back and tap and come back. Lean back and tap. There you go. Excellent. So this is working the joint of the hip. It's working your thigh muscle because you have to pick that leg up. 
Can you feel that a little bit? That's fun. It's actually working your ankle because you actually have to drop the ball of the foot and tap your bucket. Good. <laughs> there you go. Now you notice we've added our biceps. We're leaning back and when we lean back, guess what? We're using our abdominals a little bit to pull us up. Yes, we're using our arms because we're doing our good old bicep curls. And even though we don't have any weight, we're getting those muscles nice and strong. The bicep goes from the inside of the elbow, right here, all the way up to the shoulder. And that helps us pick up stuff. There you go, excellent. You've got it. And remember, if you can't get all the way up to the bucket, that's okay. You can just get up a little, maybe up a little more, and maybe up a little more. So you might have to start and climb up the bucket. There you go. Last time, you're done. So you can climb up your bucket, you just cannot kick the bucket. That's not a good thing. Okay, yeah. So now we're gonna get our dishcloth. So you're gonna take a dishcloth, and if you don't have a dishcloth handy, you could get a pillowcase and fold it in half. You could get a regular towel and fold it in half. So we're gonna make this nice and cute. There we go. So you just fold it and fold it. Perfect, perfect. Now, we're gonna lean back just like we did, but our hands are gonna reach forward. Here we go. And when we tap down, we're stretching up. Oh, there you go. So now we're working our arms and our legs. We're working the shoulders and the hips. Nice stretch. Isn't this nice? Yes. And what Connie's doing is something that's a really good idea. See if you can pull your elbows back behind your ears. If you can't, that's okay. The most important thing is that you're moving. And your bodies love to move. Because when we move, we shoot blood and oxygen to the brain and the heart. And everything kind of works a lot better. Last time on this side, last time on this side, hold up, hold up, hold up, and bring one hand over towards Connie. Good. Back to center and bring the other hand over towards me. Good job, good job. And slowly come back to center. Wow, could you feel that a little bit? Oh, I need these shoulder exercises. Keep my shoulders from stiffening up. That happens sometimes. Sometimes our shoulders just stiffen up because we don't use them, and then all of a sudden when we ask them to work for us, our shoulders go, wait a minute, you haven't had me strong or flexible, so that's why this is a really good idea. Now, this is something fun. I'm sure Connie will love to do this one. We're going to take our bucket and flip it over. There you go. We're going to put it right between our feet. Good. And we're going to stretch the feet out just a little bit. We're going to tie, take one corner, and the other corner, just kind of make a little knot. You do it. There you go. I think. <laughs> there you go. Now all you do is take your little knot and go side to side. Okay. And this is good because a knot is solid and it goes side to side. Hey, did you hear about the piece of rope that went into a bar? He asked the bartender if he could have a beer, and the bartender goes, we don't serve rope in here. So the rope walked out, and he noticed people walking in and out of the bar, and he said, you know, if I tie a little knot in the top of my head and splay out the little fibers of the, yep, just like that, I'll bet I could look like a human and walk in. <laughs> so the piece of rope tied a little knot on the end of his rope, splayed out the hair, walked in. And the bartender goes, looking at him curiously, hey, aren't you the rope that was just in here? He goes, nuh-uh, I'm afraid not. Oh, <laughs> well, that was pathetic. I know, I, I know a worse one. <laughs> Tell. All right, I, well, well, I can't now because now I'm getting in time. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go one, two, three in the bucket. Yay! Then we place the hand on the thigh, reach down and get it. Hold it here. One, two, three, in the bucket. Oh, I feel like it's March Madness. <laughs> One, two, three, in the bucket. Ooh, ooh. Good one, Mir. Reach down and get it. One, two, three, in the bucket. Oh, that's why you're supposed to hold it with your feet, by the way. I knew there was a reason last time. One, two, 
three, and in the bucket. So now we're working with the other hand, hand on the thigh, and we go. One, two, two three, three, in, in the, the bucket. bucket. And one, two, three, in the bucket. So when you reach down, your hand goes on your thigh, you protect the back. And one, two, three. Try to throw it up and have it land in the bucket. Gonna make it a little harder. Are you ready? Make it a little harder. <laughs> one, two, three. Throw it up a little bit and see if you can get it in the bucket. It's really hard to do. This bucket isn't all that big. All My right. glasses were crooked. Okay, now that they're straightened out, there's no excuse. Here we go. One, two, three. Throw it up and have it land in the bucket. Yes. Yes. Good work. Hooray. So that's just a little something fun you can do. When you toss something that's asymmetrical, and this is asymmetrical, when you toss and catch, it actually makes you a better car driver. AAA did a study and found out that when you do tossing and catching, that in fact, it helps you become a better driver because you're more aware of what's happening. I think I think you might get into a traffic accident. <laughs> okay, so that's just a little fun. Now we're gonna work our arms. When you go to the doctor, sometimes they give you a flexibility test, and if you'll excuse my backside, I'll show you what they do. They have you reach one arm up and one arm down and try to touch your hands together. That's really hard, and I hate to tell you, but I can't do it. But here's how you can get better. Can you do it? Oh. All right. So here's how we can do it. Here's how we're going to get a little, a little more flexible. You take one under your towel, and you flip it over your back, and the other hand comes behind. Now, you just pull the top hand up and the bottom hand down. Good job. Good job. And if you want to work harder, bring your hands together. Up and down, up and down. And now we work the other side. So we just do a little bit, okay? And we flip it over, nice and tall, pull it up and down, up and down, up and down, and up and down. Good work, good work. That was terrific. You did a great job today, and we're really happy you joined us. So we're going to take a great big breath in, stretch up to the sky, reach for the stars, exhale, shake all your cares and worries out. As a matter of fact, we can put our cares and worries right in the bucket. There you go. Great big breath in. And as you exhale, know that all will, will be well. Good job. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. See you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.